Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, today is August 2nd, 2022. The thought for today is geni geni genius is the ability to reduce the complicated to simple. Uh, that's C.W. Sibby. I'm going to go ahead and officially call this meeting to order tonight. I'm going to ask if um, Commissioner Ip, sir, if you would lead us in our invocation tonight. And following that, I'm going to ask um, I'm going to ask um, Commissioner Cowan if he will lead us in our pledge. If you bow your heads, please. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together and collaborate on behalf of our county. Well, we ask that you guide us, give us discernment and wisdom in everything we do, that we do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dr. Jones, I have one item I need to add, 18A, 18A. I'm asking for the county to um, pay for the audit of Vanessa Heights, Washington Street, and McIntosh, 18A, 18A. With that, I seek a motion. Thank you, sir. Can I get a second, please? Second. It's a motion by Commissioner um, Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? All in favor? It passed 4 0. Thank you. So, we're paying for the audit for McIntosh. What, what is the purpose of I just wanted to know. I didn't know what that was for. That was said again. In regards to the A, we're paying for the audit of these nonprofits. So, this is, is for discussion. Okay. In consideration. Okay. Next on the agenda is citizens' comments. This opportunity that we allow citizens to come up and make comments about agenda topics only. At this point, agenda topics only. You have three minutes to do so. If you would, please come and state your name and your address for the record, please. <coughs> agenda topics only. You have three minutes to do so. Good evening. My yeah. name is Cynthia Butler. Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. After reviewing <clears throat> RFP 2213, Opera Consulting Services for Oversight and Compliance, I had questions. On July the 26th, 2022, I did three open records requests to Jackie Smith. County Clerk. Brittany White answered the open record request. In the previous meeting, it was stated the selected vendor was awarded the contract because they were the lowest bid. They, after reviewing the open record request, there are four other vendors that responded with a lower price. Four. I have a copy, I have a printout. If you want to receive them, please do. There are four other brand vendors lower than the one that you want to award this contract to. If we decide to award this contract, we open ourselves up for other vendors to sue Newton County based on saying this is the lowest speed. Contracts I feel, I recommend, should be a separate department from finance. Currently, you have Brendan White managing both departments. Before COVID, I understand this were two departments. 
it is traditional business that purchasing and contracts are separate departments because you need a check and balance between the two. I recommend Newton County hire a grant writer. We could not apply for the money that Governor Kemp gave to 51 other counties. We don't have a grant writer. We could not apply for this money. It is my recommendation that we hire a grant writer. We've had a posting since April for a grant writer. To me, this would be a priority that the county would want to have additional funds to come in to help the community. I can't understand why you don't. I think the price should be competitive as far as offering a salary. I looked at it on the internet. I didn't see a salary posted. But I think a fair price to have a grant writer to help the, the, the citizens of Newton County. Those are my recommendations. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. Um, next is the chairman's report. I don't have anything uh, tonight. Uh, the county manager's report, Mr. Sims. You don't have anything? Thank you, sir. Next is number seven, unfinished business. <clears throat> the approval of professional service agreement, RFP 2213B. Um, Mr. Sims. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we're bringing this item back before the board for consideration for the consultant services. Um, we did have questions at the last meeting. We provided the information. Our finance director is here again to answer any questions. Got to seek a motion. Mr. Chairman, this time I'd like to move, make a motion to approve Professional Services Agreement RFP 22-13B, R for Consulting Services for Oversight and Compliance for Eparometrics LLC for ARPA Consultant, costs not to exceed $420,000. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Can I get a second, please? Can I get a second, please? Second. It's been motioned by um, Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason in a discussion. Uh, Commissioner Sanders. Um, I, I just received some information that I had no idea was the issue when the resident just came up and said that this company was not the lowest bid and there were four others that were lowest bid that can least put us in litigation. That's kind of hard for me to actually touch that when we've been saying this was the lowest bid contractor. So that now the vendors, now that's been put out there, the vendors are going to hear that. The other thing is, and I think I expressed that to my constituents, I know y'all, I mean, my, my colleagues, and y'all received a lot of emails from me from, coming from uh, NACO. There are many counties here in the state of Georgia, even those next door to us, who did not hire a consultant because they felt it was a waste of money. They did a lot of their, their work in-house, or they hired, because with these ARPA dollars, you can create a department. You can use these funds to hire people putting work back in, in the county, having jobs in our, in our county, and hire professional finance people to manage these funds. Clayton County did it, various counties did it, and also we just came from Colorado. They actually hired a department, and they kept the department on site for outreach, checks and balances, and they were able to use it. It's a blessing that we received these offer dollars because we can create infrastructure within our county and make departments so we can have this in place, not just for aqua, but for various things that are going forward. So hiring a consultant for three to six months or possibly a year, and also in that contract it says that, that it renews automatically every year, it's kind of a waste of dollars. At first I was on board until I spoke to a lot of counties in Atlanta metro area who did not use a consultant they hire people or they utilize in-house staff to save money and have those funds go back into the community. And the other piece is litigation. If this is not the lowest bid, and then we've been saying it's been the lowest bid, and we're not doing it based on our process, from what I heard, maybe we can check on that. I haven't seen the document. We might want to look at that. Uh, Commissioner Cowell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, just in response to Commissioner Sanders, I'm a little leery when other counties are doing 
or something? Because everybody in the metro area <laughs> for years, and I've been in government for years, I always get in trouble with federal funding, so I don't like to follow what they do. Yeah. I do think $420,000 is a lot of money to pay on this, so let me ask two questions. Jarvis, are you okay with this bid as it went out? Yes, sir, Mr. Commissioner. And if I can uh, also address one of the comments from Commissioner Sanders. Uh, yes, you're correct where some of the other counties are having in-house, but what they're actually doing, they're utilizing their entire amount of their ARPA funding to address in-house needs. So that's why they're not uh, hiring uh, outside consultants. Uh, Fayette County, for example, they're utilizing theirs to address infrastructure needs, the entire amount. So um, if, if that's the will of the body, you know, we had suggested that we wanted to address some of our capital needs here in our county. That's going to be the next ask. But that's why some of the other counties are not utilizing consultants. As far as the comment about the lowest bidder, we have our finance director here that can address that matter. Well, guys, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Go ahead and ask your other question first. Uh, we don't necessarily hire the lowest bidder every time. We hire the best That's bidder. correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and I guess my other question would be, Patrick, uh, hiring a consultant will take the politics out of this and basically insulate the board of commissioners. Would you think that? I'm over here. <laughs> so I think I, I, I think you're surrounded. There's no, you got nowhere to go. We got you surrounded. I, I would agree with that. I would also point out that um, the consultant, unlike Jarvis's staff and, and myself, will have, you know, he's equipped to do this. This is what they do. So with Jarvis's staff and myself, we're shifting gears into, into a, you know, a, a grant management role that isn't really what any of us do. So, and I would, I would add also that with the, with the dollar amount, the 420,000, um, we've discussed this a lot and, and Jarvis might expand on it, but that's a, a up to amount. It's gonna work a lot like your, your project management contract works, where when, when the consultant is asked to perform a specific service, you will, this board will authorize that specific service and there'll be a dollar figure that accompanies it. That's correct. Okay, thank you. That's all we got. Just to expound on uh, Commissioner Cowan's comment, comment, those individuals that use their own in-house were awarded at NACO. So it is approved by the federal government's treasury to do the in-house. And in regards to, that's what I said, in regards to infrastructure, not the uh, not capital improvements what i was speaking on we can actually utilize these funds to better our county i'm not talking about roads or whatever and so forth i'm talking about hiring the staff that we need we don't have anything in this county for checks and balances who checks behind the check nobody as as the resident just mentioned we don't have that in this county and other counties do have that and i've talked to the finance directors at the other county that was one reason why i did the research and I asked those questions to those individuals. And Adams County, Colorado was one of the main examples at the count, at, at, the, at the actual convention. They had an in-house, uh, did all of their things in-house and saved money. Conyers Next Door was just awarded an award for having the best offer detailed administration by doing it in-house. It's even in the paper where they saved $300,000 by doing it in-house and they're utilizing them as the example of doing offer. We have these people next door who are award winning with offer and we have not reached out to them. Uh, Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Ms. C. Well, first of all, just test, uh, please, if this is what we're giving, being a little late. Sometimes it used to be I'd be so happy to get here, I used to get run out of the door about 30 minutes before time and get here way ahead of time. And now most of the time I kind of dread getting here. But nevertheless, I asked for it, and I continue to ask that citizens support me, and hopefully I remain in this particular role. 
question that I want to ask, and uh, maybe it probably already have been asked, but I just was here to hear the answer, was that um, there's the uh, people that we're going to have the uh, consultants. Are they managing the uh, commission portion of the author funds, or they, or they mention another portion of it? Because I was just, when I left, I was more confused because it was, it, all of a sudden it had changed. And so I guess this is to Patrick. Then I have one other question. You want me? The proposal, as I understand it, would, them, would be for them to administer all of the ARPA funds that have not yet been allocated and spent. If I'm wrong about that, Mr. Sim, let me know. That's correct, but also taking into consideration that the commissioners have already uh, identified their particular projects and uh, ensuring that those projects uh, are in compliance with federal rules, then it should be a problem. But all the projects would go before the, the consultants so we can ensure that at the end of the day, we're not held where we have unallowable expenses and then the county is having to pay for that. Absolutely. And if my memory serves me right, the um, uh, last meeting that we had, uh, we, there was discussion about uh, the author fund that already had spent, been spent, I think, um, to the mental health facility and to the healing helpers. I think about, was it 700? Hit me out if, if you would. Uh, uh, account manager, I think it was 700, 600,000 to the help, healing helpers, and the other, I uh, think it was about 400,000 to the um, um, view, view burn. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the view, view burn. And I think we learned at that particular meeting that the money that already had been spent uh, for that. So I guess, and I guess I'm referring this to legal, uh, Patrick is that how do you get the information, the same information that you are asking us for now, since it's changed, or how are you getting that particular information from them? Because I'm, I'm just a firm believer that you, I like to treat people somewhat the same. And it seems like we, we, we start doing it one way, and then we all over into something different. <coughs> and then I have one follow-up question, Mr. C, and then I'll be through. So if, if you and the rest of the board will recall, um, Mr. Sims and I both urged the board not to award those funds that night. We urged the board to slow down and give us an opportunity to do all of that work beforehand. Um, so we were left scrambling a little bit and we were able to assemble together the information that we felt was necessary before the funds were distributed. Uh, thank you for that. But if my memory serves me, I'm not trying to be, kind of go into a debate about this. I think, and I was just, um, I probably did a little sidebar to Commissioner Sanders, uh, uh, the county manager was not here. You were, Mr. Patrick, giving us that particular advice. You said that we could do it. And let me, may I, if I may finish, yep. you said it was all right at that particular time. What I'm saying was, at the same time, I had gave a list of all my author funding, had made sure every commissioner got it, and it was supposed to be, like he both times, supposed to have been a, a, a addressed as soon as possible by the author fund committee, and it never was. And now I'm finding myself having to have my constituents and people uh, prolong about getting help out into the community. And just let me just say to you, what, um, and why I'm, I can't understand why it's so complicated. We know that there's a lot of food, food insecurities in, in Newton County. In fact, if you, um, if you pass over on uh, uh, Embry Street, 36 in town, you see First, uh, First Baptist, if I'm not mistaken, and you see a big long line of cars. And it'd be a lot of people up there just trying to get a meal, just to get a box of food, which they only get, a box, get once a month. And all I'm asking, What's so complicated about giving money to already established food banks out of uh, District 4, uh, like St. Paul, um, or in other churches here in town, which I can't just think all right off the top of my head, who already have established food banks, giving them money to supply, um, fill up their food banks so they can 
continue to uh, distribute food to the people who need it. I don't see why it's so complicated. Now I can see maybe if I was sent off in the bill something over at Nelson Heights, oh, as for a shed, it might take you a year and a half or two years, but just to give them a few dollars, $10,000, $5,000 to the churches here in town, the, the, for people to, to give them food, and we got to hire a consultant to that, I, I don't see why, why is it that's so complicated about helping people need. I didn't see why it was so long just to give people a bit of help on their mortgage and rent payments, the seven hundred thousand dollars. But you know, uh, but why are we making? Why are we somewhat, in my opinion, and I take the blame, whatever it, it may be, are we punishing people just for just trying to survive in hard times? Why are we? That should be a no-brainer to me. And um, you know, and, and there are times. That I think we need a second opinion. <laughs> this is one of the times that I think that we need it. And, and I just like to thank Commissioner Sanders for going to those conventions. I've been to several myself a long time ago. And uh, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of good ideas that come out of that. And then I stop trying to, just a little bit of money, was about 20,000, got the other 11,000 something, 20 million or 21 million. Let us stop fussing about it and let's get it out to the people who need it or do the stuff that we need to be, that need to be done. So this is about all I got to say, Mr. C. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, making a comment on the uh, discussion whether or not we should have higher staff or higher employees or versus a consultant. A um, couple different things. One, uh, I know for the last two uh, budget cycles, uh, this particular board has had an issue uh, with the <coughs> amount of personnel that we've already had in place. Uh, and it has been stated that we are personnel heavy uh, and that we need to cut back on staff. So I guess it's confusing to me to know that these last two budget cycles that we've gone through, uh, we wanted to cut staff, but now all of a sudden, now we want to hire more staff. So that's the first thing that confuses me. Uh, the second thing is uh, when you actually hire staff, you're not only hiring them with a the salary, it also comes with benefits. Uh, so you got to add that as well. So there's a possibility that it may even exceed, depending on how many we would have to hire, the amount that we've already budgeted for that in itself. And the last point is, these funds are to be spent by 2026. So if we hire 2026, so if we hire staff, then what do we do after 2026 with the staff that we've actually hired do we terminate them or do we find something else for them to do? So I think when you really look at the overall scope of this discussion, really having a consultant in place that is a subject matter expert that can really help guide this board who are not subject matter experts, guide our staff who are not subject matter experts in really utilizing these federal dollars and putting them in place where they need to be is best. Uh, I'm okay with getting examples from other counties, but sometimes we have to step up to the plate as leaders and think for ourselves. And we have to see what is best for us versus what is best for another county. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, Commissioner Edwards. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But I'm, you know, I want to I make sure we have some perspective here. You know. <coughs> I believe it was about 10 months ago, uh, our former county manager was set to issue an RFP for a, for a consultant. Maybe we did issue an RFP, I don't recall. And we, we beat that down. We said, no, we don't have time for a consultant. So fast forward six or seven months, I, I guess when you go back three, four or five months ago, we decided we, we did want a consultant. So we did the necessary paperwork, um, my time went the necessary paperwork to get that 
that particular position put in place, and now we don't want it again. So we've come we've come full circle. Um, uh, and, and as far as hiring staff, um, uh, you're talking about probably six months, I guess. Six months to hire staff, and then they're here doing what afterwards? And I'm not into expanding government, so um, uh, only necessary positions. But I'm just not into that. So uh, personally, but uh, so you're you're looking, and, and I hear commissioners. Uh, Henderson say, you know, our, our timelines are getting long, and, and the, it's, we've been doing this a year probably. So uh, you're talking about extending it another six months with an in-house in staff hiring, and our consultant. We're, now we're poised to hire a consultant. So I, I'm just I'm I'm ready to move forward. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, we're going. I'm going to ask for a motion. Is that Commissioner? Yeah, I'm I'm going to give you the opportunity to make a comment, but I'm just letting the board know I'm getting ready to ask for a motion. Oh, you made that? Go ahead. I just want to make a correction. Uh, no one on this board wanted to get rid of employees. We were talking about the raises, so no one said anything about uh, get rid of employees. We were speaking on recession, and hopefully we wouldn't have to get rid of employees if we're in recession giving them raises and coal at the same time. So let's make that correction. No one on this board stated that. But I'm glad you asked that, that question about hiring of employees. This is $500,000. If you're hiring two to three employees, do you know how long $500,000 will last for somebody paying, even paying them with benefits, $50,000 or $55,000? It will last a long time. And with our population growing here in New County, as you can see from our census, it grew and our budget grew we can handle those employees after the fact, and we don't have a check and balance department as the, the resident just stated, we don't even have a purchasing department. So those employees can go back into purchasing because we got rid of the purchasing department, and you have our finance director over purchasing and finance, which is an issue. So that's where it can come into play where we, have, um, we can put that in place. So there is not an issue. Now our general budget is 80 to 90 million dollars. So you saying the county can't handle 20 million? That's a problem. That says something about New County. Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ian. This, this will be just really brief. I, I think last time the question was asked, and was asked by Commissioner Sanders, and maybe she can make sure that I get this exact way she had asked this question. Was anybody in the, on that consultant, were they any kin to anybody, uh, I guess, on the board? Or how, how did you state that? Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. My question was last meeting, does anybody on the board, appointed staff, or anybody know or have worked with the consultant? Because the consultant is in a local area out of Alpharetta. So I was wondering, did anybody on this board, staff, anybody, appointed attorneys, knew the consultant or ever have worked with the consultant? And I don't think any, only person that asked answered was Brittany. Nobody answered the question. Guys, thank you for that discussion. I am. Uh, calling for the vote now. All in favor? All opposed? It passed uh, three one one extension. You want to state your reason? Yes, because I was I was coming in to do it when I think the vote had been made and I was not told it. Didn't told know what the, what the motion was. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next seven a. <coughs> Request to approve the FY 2023 <coughs> FLOS Intergovernment Agreement. Um, you gonna take that or you want air? Yes. Mr. Myers, you wanna take that for us? Hey, Commissioner. So we are at the end of the FLOS journey, um, at least as far as the board is concerned. Uh, so as it stands, the SPLOS IGA has incorporated the project list that this board decided on, and it is uh, set at a allocation of revenues at 78% to the county, 22% for the city, and that will cover for the entire life of the SPLOS. There's no accelerated amount to the cities at the end of it. Uh, the IGA has been approved, it's gone through uh, review by Bond Council, the City of Covington has approved it as well, and it's our recommendation that the board uh, adopt this resolution and uh, adopt this lost IGA. 
Thank you, guys. I think, uh, thank you, sir. I seek a motion, please. So moved. Thank you, sir. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner um, Henderson and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? Commissioner Cowan? Mayor, will this require any bonding for some projects? Yes. Um, the, and if you may help me out here, uh, this, the, the current project list the county has, does it require bonding to, um, to get there? The bond interest is built into the cost of the projects. So for example, if you turn to page two, uh, the first line, administrative building reutilization, um, on page two, that number is a little bit different than what was on your previous project list because the previous project list had the debt servicing as a separate project. Uh, working with bond council, they recommended that we roll the bonded cost into each individual project. So we just did that on a pro rata basis. So you'll no notice the numbers are a little bit different on this, um, but yeah, bond, bond financing is going to be used. So the bonding will allow us to get some immediate projects done. And that is correct. Wait on the returns to come in, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, and uh, so this IGA doesn't uh, require any particular project to be bonded. Uh, you can make that decision at a later date. So that'll be an issue that's been, that'll be brought back up probably about the time that we're issuing the bonds. We'll have to decide which projects are going first. And the referendum, if approved, will authorize the issuance of the bonds up to that maximum amount. This board can then decide whether or not to issue any bonds or borrow any money. And if so, how much up to that amount? So you're not locked in to what's the maximum amount of the bonds? Twenty-four million five hundred is what we. You're not out. locked into borrowing that much money, but you're assuming the referendum passes. So it's you're authorized to. Yeah, That's right. Commissioner Henderson, no. do I need to restate the motion to include the bonding? No, you do not. Yeah. Yep. So all of that language is included in the IGA, and uh, the resolution that you have <coughs> incorporates that IGA into it. Any more discussion? All in favor? Passes 5 -0. Thank you so much. Uh, I think you are next to um, FY 2023 supplies referendum. Aaron? Yes, sir. So uh, the next item before you, this is the resolution where the board actually uh, imposes the tax and calls the election. Uh, so this resolution, it incorporates the project list. Uh, it incorporates the allocation of funds from the IGA. Uh, it authorizes the issuance of up to 24,900,000 in debt, and it uh, authorizes the Board of Elections to go out and issue the call of the election to run the ads that need to be taken. <coughs> it provides the sample ballot language that will be used for this BLOST election. So what this resolution is doing, now that you have an IGA in place, you can call for a six years BLOST, and this resolution simply authorizes that election to go forward. Thank you. I seek a motion, guys. So moved. It's been motioned by uh, Commissioner uh, Mason and second by Commissioner Calvin. Any discussion? Uh, Commissioner Sanders. <clears throat> I have a question for our project manager. I see him in the back. I have questions in regards to the projects that are being placed on the referendum. He wasn't here last time to be able to answer those questions. So I just wanted some answers in regards to the projects. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Thank you so much for your for your time. Um, the Westside Park was allocated three million dollars, and during the splash presentation, which was recorded, I was there. The Senior Services and the Westside Park were presented together on the same link. And as we know, in 2022, $3 million is not enough to build a park and purchase land and design and everything. So if senior, is Senior Services going to be partnering with that project? If so, who's paying for the land? 
So it's my understanding um, that the way the senior services allocation in this list is it gives them enough monies for them to either either co-locate or basically be located somewhere else. And that, that'll be a process that we'll go through with that particular project. Okay, and I have one more question. It's in regards to the West, the west Side, um, not Aquatic Center and the Water Park. Um, when they had the actual meeting, it was stating that the citizens were paying <coughs> the amount for the land and then an investor was coming to take over. Is that the same thing or everything is gonna be a part of the county? Because these questions came to me, so don't come for me, the questions came to me from the citizens that they saw the splash meeting and they were there at the splash meeting saying that economic development was taking over and the six million was for to acquire the land. So they asked this question to me to find out what is the current with that because they didn't want their tax dollars going towards that. So these are questions coming from citizens, residents. So the the original the original request for six million dollars, which was listed under the economic development, was a was an investment from the, the county to uh, put in infrastructure that would then entice a private sector company or developer to come in and to develop that facility. Um, but that has not, so made, is that, that did not make the list. No. So the five million is just to build a park, a water park for Newton County, because that's what the, the residents were asking me in my town. So is it just for Newton County, an investor coming yes. in? So no investors No, no in? investors. Okay. This, is, this would be just for, this would be under a Parks and Recreation okay. Department project, like okay. the rest of them that we're doing with them. Okay. That was all. I'm sorry. And that's correct. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? It passed five on. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Next, we have the consent agenda. Um, tonight, we have a appointment to defects board. Mr. Al Miller, are you here tonight? Al Miller. He's not here. We always like to recognize those that um, are willing to serve uh, for their community. So we want to thank him for his service. Uh, he's taking on that responsibility. Commissioners, I seek a motion of approval, please. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Commissioner Henderson? <coughs> are the minutes a part of the consent agenda? The minutes? Oh, the minutes are part of the consent yes. agenda? Yes, sir. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, when we had uh, changed the agenda last meeting, that uh, and we voted for an approved for the uh, um, was one hundred fifty thousand dollars of improvements over at Nelson Heights. That that those minutes are in the consent agenda. It's in the minutes. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? Pass five votes. Next is um, item number nine, new business. Um, they're having a public hearing tonight with the ES NSP. You wanna come on up, sir? Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, good evening. I apologize, I don't think we're gonna have the presentation on the screen, but there are copies on the table there if the public wants to follow along. And there should be copies in your board books uh, for the commissioners. So I'm gonna try to move at a steady pace because there is a decent amount of information to go over, but if there are any questions or I'm not explaining something clearly, please let me know. So on slide two, just a summary of what we're gonna talk about. We'll look at what NSP is. I know we've, for some of you, we've talked about that before, but that may be kind of new for others. We'll talk about how the program was structured here in the county and what we accomplished. We'll do a high level look at the finances of the program, how much funding we were allocated, how much was used, what it was used on. It is on, it's on page 43, excuse me, 48, I'm sorry, Scott. It's on page 48 for the commissioners. Sorry, now go ahead, sorry. Okay. During the length of the program, we've been submitting quarterly reports to the Department of Community Affairs. Uh, 
uh, giving them updates on what we've been doing. We submitted our final quarterly report in June, and part of the requirements is that we spend some time looking specifically at that and what it contains. So we'll spend a moment reviewing that. Then we'll talk about the phase of the grant that we're in right now, which is called Closeout. I really wish they had picked a different name because Closeout makes it sound like we are finishing, we're wrapping things up, and that is definitely not the case. We will continue to have responsibilities and obligations with this grant for quite some time in the future, but what it does mean is we're not going to spend any further funds. <coughs> And so we'll talk about closeout, and then we'll also talk about what happens after closeout or post closeout, as I've put it here. And then finally, once we've reviewed all this information, we'll have a time where the public can make comments or ask questions if they so choose. So the Neighborhood Stabilization Program was created by Congress in 2008 as part of their response to the foreclosure crisis that was occurring at the time. The bulk of the funding was intended to be provided to local governments to purchase foreclosed homes, repair them if necessary, bring them back up to code, make them livable, and then sell those properties to families that met certain income requirements. And that was what we spent the bulk of our funding on here in the county, but we also used about a half million dollars to purchase some land to build a public park in the Fairview State's community. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about that in a moment. So you'll see on slide three, there's a breakdown, again, a very high level breakdown of how the funding was used for the park between land acquisition, construction, and equipment. Again, it was right at half a million dollars for housing between acquisition and rehabilitation, it was about $1.4 million, and then a little over $100,000 for administrative costs, such as legal fees and working with consultants and that sort of thing. It's on slide four. And again, for anyone in the audience, there are copies at that table if you'd like to be following along with us. Uh, the Fairview Community Park was dedicated in 2011. This was what is called a passive park. So no organized activities or anything like that. It's a playground, a pavilion with some picnic tables, a walking trail, a large open space just for kind of a play area, that sort of thing. But, and then we did a very small parking area as well. Uh, but no organized activities or anything like that. Then for the housing component, we did bring in a partner, uh, someone who was familiar with administering fr uh, federal grants and also familiar with housing programs because we really had no one on staff with that, that level of experience. Our original partner, this is a little bit of a mouthful, was the Independent Educational Community Development Group, or IECDG. They were a nonprofit out of uh, Conyers. They purchased 12 homes for us and sold five of them. Unfortunately, over time, there were some issues with their performance. Uh, they weren't always producing the correct documentation on the first attempt. We had to go back and seek supplements. Uh, they lost some staff, which meant things were taking longer than they really should have. And so I want to say around 2012, maybe, we uh, mutually agreed that it was time to part ways. And so we moved to a second partner, which was our local Habitat for Humanity affiliate. And they finished the housing component by selling the remaining seven homes. And so you can see on the last line, sort of a summary, 12 homes purchased, 12 sold, and then it talks about five homes having completed their affordability period. And that's an important term I want to make sure everybody understands. So the way Congress structured the grant was 
most of the money had to be spent to benefit families that made 120% or less of the area median income. And then a quarter of the funds had to benefit families that made 50% or less than area median income. Given those parameters and the fact that we had to make the properties affordable to those families, meaning the mortgages could not cost more than 30% of their income, it was clear that the mortgages would not pay for the total cost of what we put into the properties. And so the fair market value might be here, what the families could pay might be here. And that was how Congress designed, I mean, they kind of built in a loss, so to speak. The problem was what they didn't want was for a family to buy the home at this cost and then turn right around and sell it for this amount. And so to put protection into the program, they created what's called an affordability period. And so this was a length of time and it varied depending on how much of a subsidy the family received. It might be five years up to 20 years, but you had to own and occupy your home for that entire time. And if you did sell the home, within that affordability period, there are provisions to capture a prorated amount of that subsidy so that people weren't benefiting beyond what the program intended. Does that make sense? Because we're still, we have homes in the affordability period now, I wanna make sure everybody understands what that is. I'm flipping over to page five again, just looking at Big picture uh, financial aspects, we were originally awarded about $1.7 million. Uh, if you skip down to line three, it says we used about $2.1 million. Well, where did that other funding come from? Again, the way the program was structured is when we sold the homes and we received uh, a check from the family at, at the closing. They would have gone to a lender, received a mortgage, and brought a check, just like a normal, typical closing would occur. That money was allowed, we were allowed to recycle that into the program and use it to buy another house. And so that was called program income. We had about another $465,000 through program income. And we're still, we've been receiving program income all along from Habitat because their process was a little different. With Habitat, they are the lender. They issue the mortgage, so to speak, themselves. A no interest loan for the families, which is another benefit for the families that were able to work with Habitat when you know the other families who went to a traditional lender had to pay interest on the mortgage. The Habitat families did not, making it even more affordable but they're paying those mortgages back over 30 years. So we still have, we and will have families paying those mortgages back for a significant amount of time. Habitat collects those uh, payments and then twice a year submits that payment to us uh, and that becomes program income. So again, I'm covering a lot of ground pretty quickly. I just wanna make sure there's no questions. Are you, yeah, no, we're going to let you finish. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and let you finish it then. I'll give you the next question. Thank you, Walker, for making that happen. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. packets you should also have a copy it's three pages of the final quarterly progress report again that was issued to the Department of Community Affairs I, I skipped something that was important so Congress created NSP assigned the responsibility for administering the program to HUD at the federal level but our funding came through the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. So when we talk about reporting and oversight of our program, typically gonna talk about DCA.
because that's who we were responsible to. That's where our funding came from. So I don't think DCA could have made this form any uh, more confusing. You'll see in column A, there's these uh, seemingly random codes. I'll try to explain those as best I can. Uh, the first two, the O1-B, that's property acquisition. So that would include both uh, the housing and I believe a portion of the uh, park land. The reason there's two line items for that, the dash H and the dash I, that goes back to the fact that most of the fund, all the funding had to benefit families at 120% area median income. That's the dash I line, but then 25% had to benefit 50%. That's the dash H line. So you'll, for most of the ways we spent the money, you'll see the funding broken up into two parts like that. The third line item is the public facilities, so that was funding that went towards the construction of the park. Uh, the next two items that have no funding assigned to them, those were for down payment assistance. The board at the time decided not to pursue funding for that particular use, uh, so we didn't have money allocated to that. The next two are for rehabilitation of the houses, and then the last line item is administration. And if you look in the lower right-hand corner, that 100% indicates we used all of the uh, treasury funding that we had been allocated. So by the end of the grant, we used all the funding that had been allocated. The other two pages, just very quickly, there's space for a very short narrative of what happened in the three month period that the quarterly report covers. There really, at this point, was no activity because we were in the closeout period. We weren't doing anything uh, in addition to what had already been done, so there's very little text there. And then the final page is really just a summary overview of the entire project, the key things to look at there, kind of in the middle of the page, the housing accomplishments, it shows 12 units acquired, 12 rehabilitated, 12 sold. Uh, so again, we did 53 of those reports and they all look very similar to this, but if there's any questions, I guess we'll hold them to the end, but I'm happy to, to go Thank over you. those. Any questions, Commissioner? Uh, Commissioner Sanders. I'm kind of happy to be on the agenda because that's been a huge topic in District 3. Um, you mentioned actually twice no organized activity. Was this voted on by the board when this was put in place? And the reason why I'm asking that question because you have residents that live in the subdivision, which I understand, <coughs> are their livelihood hindered. Then you have new county who pays to maintain this park. Just this year, we spent $400,000 maintaining this park. Yes, the, the benches, the residents wanted the trees cut, the residents wanted various things up, they wanted lights up, and we spent $400 a month on the lights. So you have now citizens saying, I paid to maintain this park, and I'm hearing no organized activity. They come to me, I've had some asked about doing activities there, Easter egg hunts, and they were told no, but they paid for this park out of their tax dollars to maintain it. So did the citizen, I mean, uh, the board, I don't know if you guys were here in 2000, no, I don't think anybody was here in 2008 in the recession. Did, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> did this board vote that there is no organized activity on a public park that the taxpayers pay to maintain? So, a little history, when the project was first proposed, there was, the idea was to do organized activities. There were going to be basketball courts, I believe, and, and things like that. The community at the time was not in favor of that. They wanted something simpler and smaller, and that's how we wound up with the passive park. The board, I don't know that they ever explicitly voted to say there would never be organized activities, but the way the park was designed, it wasn't intended to have 
you know, Parks and Rec do anything along those lines. I, I don't think anyone at the time I would have objected to an Easter egg hunt. I think when I say well, no yeah, organized yeah, activity, no. well, I can't speak, you know, I, I just, at the time that wasn't what was intended when we said no organized activity. It was more no rec leagues and, and such as that. Um, but I don't think there's anything that the board explicitly said there would never be organized activity. It was just that was what the community wanted at the time. Has, has and then you probably can't answer this, but you may can because you were here during that time. Um, I don't understand why the board didn't offer once they organized an HOA, offer to the HOA to purchase the land so it wouldn't be an issue and a burden on the county. Because I've, I've even spoken to our county manager. I've had people approach me about purchasing the land or the HOA or offer them the land. Because you have 12 acres of land that the county owned is maintaining, paying for the just say that this, this year alone, we spent $400,000 maintaining that park. Cutting trees, putting up lights, as well as uh, taking out the benches and replacing the benches. We just put in a new playground for them. And so now we're telling these red, the taxpayers in Newton County they can't have an event or they can't go to this property. And I completely understand the residents of Fairview Estates. Believe me, if I had a home in there, I probably would be fighting and say, I don't want a park inside of it. But it, it's looking at the side of the taxpayers who don't live in Fairview Estates and saying, why can't we utilize this property? We pay for it, we own it. Why can't we put certain things on it? So that's probably something um, county, Mr. Andrew County Manager may have to look into because that's an issue with the taxpayers as was the issue with the residents. So we gotta figure this thing out. So has there been an offer to the HOA to pay for this? Just go ahead and let them purchase the land. I'm not aware of any discussion like that. I think one thing that needs to be mentioned at this point is the one stipulation that follows that property from NSP is if the county ever transfers it into ownership of any other entity, we have to pay back what NSP put into the project. And I, I wish we would look into this more in detail before we move forward with this, because now you have taxpayers paying for property they cannot even utilize. Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Ms. Singh. If my memory serves me right, thinking back uh, that for, it was a, NSP was a good program. It was a program where there was a lot of foreclosures in the county. And what the objective was, was to kind of stop some of the bleed and purchase some of those homes, resell them back to the citizens, no reasonable, especially to the ones who maybe couldn't afford them. We came into all kind of issues. Um, the first issue was that they were using contractors. The contractor, guess what it did? <laughs> they didn't pay the contractors. I guess the, the first organization, we were stuck with paying those bills. And with a lot of extra money, extra stuff that we had to do over that way. Um, the way I believe the NSP program was, was supposed to work, we were supposed to rehabilitate, get somebody re rehabilitate them, or get someone else to rehabilitate them, sell them, and then we'll move on into the county and maybe to other underserved areas and do the exact same thing. But we end up getting stuck over there. We end up getting stuck over there with the lots that you just make reference to. The lots was something was in foreclosure that we had to assume them to as well under that program. And typically, what we used to do, we may not do it quite as much now, we would follow the lead of the commissioner. And Commissioner Schultz, and if whatever you end up with and what you got in there, it was following her lead. Nobody in other said, I'm gonna go over in District 5 and tell running what to do. Or I'm gonna go over in District 3 and tell the commission what to do. Uh, we're going to try to take this from that. We let the commissioner kind of lead the way. And what you, the next commissioner, what you end up with is where the other commissioner kind of left, that left off. And um, it really has been a headache for me over these years having to think about and continue spending taxpayers' money on that project for years and years. And it seemed like we're not at an end. He said close out, but it's not a close out. Still gonna have to deal with it for a time for, for years to come. Thank you, Mr. C. Thank you. Well, it's eight o'clock, and we're gonna open it up for a public hearing. Um, I'm gonna allow ten minutes for those that wanna make comments about um, the NSP. 
a neighborhood stabilization program. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, but I do have a couple more pages to go over. It is, unless it, unless we have to finish. No, go, 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 I'm, go, I'm go. so sorry. I will do this as quickly as I can. Um, so I think page seven of the handout, I won't go through all of these items. I just wanted to list those to show, uh, to give a sense of what we've been doing uh, during closeout for the last couple of years and then a sense of what comes next. The most important thing is completing the uh, public hearing tonight and then we'll ask for authorization for the chairman to sign one form that's key to continuing. But what I really wanted to cover is the post closeout, which is here on page eight. So we'll continue to have properties in the affordability periods, as I mentioned, that will go through September of 2030. Uh, we'll continue to process the program income payments from Habitat. The key thing I want to point out here is that for a time, Habitat, the homeowners have been behind in paying Habitat. There's been some families that were struggling, things that happened to, could happen to anyone. Uh, and so Habitat has been behind in paying the county. We've talked to DCA. They said that's fine as long as everything gets caught up by the end of the program. But this gives Habitat the flexibility not to have to foreclose or something like that. Uh, the good news is I talked to our contact at Habitat on Friday. All the families except for one have caught up. Unfortunately, the one family that has not caught up is significantly behind, but they did. We sent them information about uh, the ARPA funding and they did apply for that, so we're hopeful that will benefit them. We ha I don't think they've had a decision yet. Uh, but the uh, Habitat mortgages will run until the year 2045. And so that's why I said we will still be working with NSP, although at a much reduced pace, we'll still be working with NSP for a number of years in the future. And then, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. The final thing I wanted to cover, just to make sure everyone is aware, and this is certainly not to uh, cause undue alarm, but I think we have to recognize it is a possibility. As I said, there is one family that is significantly behind. It looks like they will have some opportunities to catch up, but I think we have to recognize that with there being 20 plus years and many families still paying those mortgages, things can happen to anyone, there is the possibility of Habitat having to foreclose. And they will do everything they can not to do that, but some, there may come a time when that is the, just the last resort. Unfortunately, it is unclear what happens if they do have to foreclose. The paperwork, the applicable paperwork was done a little bit differently for each property, so it's it's not like we can just pick an example and say this is what happens, but of course when a foreclosure happens, we would still be, the county would still be responsible to DCA for the balance of the mortgage. What should happen is we'd have an asset, the property, that would help to offset that balance. But the property is not going to be owned by us, it's going to be owned by Habitat on our behalf. It's not clear if it has to be sold through the NSP program again, would that start a whole new affordability period and a whole new 30 more year mortgage? We just, there's a lot of unanswered questions and we've talked to the attorneys at Gerard and Davis and their recommendation was don't pay us to analyze one property that may never get foreclosed on, the information wouldn't be applicable to others, we don't want you to throw money away. So we're kind of just waiting to see if that happens and then we'll we'll get more information at that point. I just wanted, I didn't want that to be a surprise somewhere down the line. I want just to recognize that this could happen at any moment and we'll just have to deal with it when that occurs. I'll commission him. He's had a question and yeah. possible follow up question. No. Uh, if somehow another, uh, the author form 
could catch them up, would they be able to afford <coughs> their payment from that point on also until the end? I mean, I guess the end of the mortgage, I guess. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so you're asking if they get if, the If the fund, you know, we are helping families you know, to a certain amount, I think. Uh, I'm not mistaken, I'm referring to you because I, you don't read that whole uh, our author funding, uh, especially paying mortgage payments. I think it, it's authorized to put to two or three thousand. Uh, Patrick, you make it chime in if you would, please. And uh, two or three thousand, they could help them get back on track. I hate to see anybody out, and I think it would be a, uh, in my opinion, don't know who they are, don't care who they are. Right. We just won't. You know, we, we don't need, we need for this thing to kind of come on to an end as far as our, for our taxpayers. If we could help them within the limits of what we're giving of several other people. Because I've been there and there. I, I, you know, I, I've been there and there with people and help them um, to catch their mortgage, if, if possible, depending on how much it is, and move them on forward, you know. I'm, so, I am not familiar with how the ARPA funding works, what the amount eligible amounts are, and how that's determined. But if what the habitat person and I, I don't want to talk about amounts. I want to respect the privacy absolutely. of the family. But what habitat indicated is this would help to catch them up, but would probably not catch them completely up. But it would give them more flexibility for Habitat to say, okay, we've got time to let you deal with the things that they're dealing with. Absolutely, okay. Thank you. Okay, I apologize for that taking so long, but we are now ready to have the public hearing. This is not like a zoning public hearing. There's no speaking in favor or speaking against. It's just, do you have comments about the program, questions about the program? I will step aside and let anyone from the public <coughs> Thank you, sir. It, was interesting. Um, it is approximately 8 07. We're going to open it up now for our public hearing tonight. Uh, if anyone want to make comments tonight, you may do so. We're going to have a 10, 10 minute um, time limit tonight. If you would like to make comments, you may come at this time. Please state your name, your address for the record, please. And one would like to make comments, please state your name, your address for the record, please. See, how can the county be in business in business for their time? Go ahead, sir. Well, uh, real are. estate. How can they be a real estate agents and all that? And they're using the taxpayers' money to build them, buy them houses, build them. Then when, when, they, when they, like you say, when they have to foreclose them, we lost all that money. So, y'all y'all can use the taxpayers' money to buy houses and rebuild them, which you did that one time before. And I understood that you lost your rear. <laughs> so I thought you quit it. It's just like we, we, lost, we lost all that money on that re uh, reservoir deal. And then y'all want to keep on splash Adding on to splash, and all, that thing said that wanted to vote for another penny to. No. Can you state your name and add it for the record, please? Thomas Butler, 60, please. Anyone else would like to make comments? Anyone else? Thank you. That <laughs> portion of our public hearing is closed. <laughs> Mr. Buck. Thank you. You want to present item number nine? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so there's one more form in uh, one more page in your books. Looks like this. Georgia Community, the Department of Community Affairs at the top, grant closeout certification. This is a form that uh, we're required to submit to DCA as part of the closeout process. It would be 
be signed by Chairman Baines. It essentially says two things. One, that we are affirming that we've completed all of our requirements as part of the grant. I can tell you that we have. We've already submitted the documentation to DCA. They have agreed. I'm not entirely sure why we have to sign another form stating this, but we've been audited many times. We've submitted all the quarterly reports, etc. So I'm very confident that we've uh, finished our requirements. And then the second item is just that the financial information listed below there is accurate. So it reflects the treasury funds we were allocated and reflects the fact that we do not have any remaining funds on hand. We've returned a small portion of the funding that we did not use during the course of the grant. Uh, so for this, we, we do need a vote from the, the board Thanks to whether or not Chairman can sign the form. Thank you, sir. Yeah, let's take a motion, please. Thank you. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards. I get a second, please. Yeah. Thank you. It's a motion by Commissioner Ed Edwards and second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Commissioner Sanders. Just one quick question. I heard you state that the mortgage that they're paying to <coughs> Habitat, a check is given, correct if I'm wrong, to the county, right? So where are these funds, maybe Jarvis can ask this question, once that money is given to the county, what are they being used for? In the past, they were recycled into the program and used to buy other properties. But uh, the properties are already purchased now, so where is that money going? Can somebody answer that question? Yeah, well, I'm saying, so in the past, the program income was used to purchase additional properties, so not the house that they're paying the mortgage on, but another house that would be sold to another family. At this point, because we're in closeout, that money will just get returned to DCA. We won't be able to use it for any additional projects. So how long have we been receiving money from the mortgage? Was it the end of that? I thought it was May, 20, since May 2022? No, we've been receiving payments from Habitat since 2015. Until what's the end date? Until, Until about 2020. 2020. Well, no, we, I'm, I apologize. We still will be receiving payments today and into the future until 2045. Okay. But we, we no longer can recycle the money to buy any additional properties. Okay. So, so the money has been coming to the council. My question is where, what is it being used for the properties? If we have we purchased the property with this money, you stated it's to buy other properties. Am I correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to understand. It was used in the past to buy additional properties. But at this point, because we're in closeout, we'll just return the money to DCA. Okay. I got that part. Okay. But you stated that you were receiving funding. So you purchased the homes already in the beginning. So my question is, what has the money been used for if the homes were already purchased? So we purchased the original um, homes through IECDG. And we received program income from those. Those were used to help buy some of the additional homes that wound up being sold by Habitat. The money that came from Habitat was not enough. Maybe I'm, this is probably where the confusion is. I apologize. The money from Habitat has not been enough to purchase another home. We had about $70,000 from them. That money was returned to DCA earlier this year. It wasn't enough to buy another house. We ran out of time to accumulate more funds, and so we just returned it to the program. Okay, thank you. You answered my question. I, 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 I realized <laughs> where I was taken, so sorry. Any more discussion? All in favor? It passes 5 0. Thank you, sir. Next, discussion and consideration of, of, of objection to annexation. Um, Patrick. Yeah, that's me. Maka, can you put that? Okay, on the screen before you is a, a, a tax parcel map showing, highlighted in red, two, three parcels that the city of Covington wishes to annex. Now the annexation includes also 
the parcel immediately to the south of the red parcels, which are 007911, then the parcel to the right of that one, 006006. The property in purple is the existing city limits. So the city's notice is that there has been an application to annex. The parcels highlighted in red and the parcel below to the right. Watching there, that parcel and the one to the right of that, that parcel. The notice we received from the city of Covington informing us of the proposed annexation told us that the proposed annexation would be accompanied by a rezoning request to zone the property from its, from its present zoning classification to the heavy industrial M2 zoning classification. Typically, when you get one of these, the city is annexing the property with its current zoning and will carry over the current zoning. And that's one of the bases, in fact, it's, it's essentially the only basis that the county has to assert an objection to an annexation. In this instance, the zoning will change from the A, Newton County's Agricultural Zoning District, <coughs> all of those properties, to the City of Covington's Heavy Industrial Zoning Classification. So what's happening is you're going from the least intensive zoning classification to the most intensive zoning classification. That suggests that the county has a basis for an objection if the county so chooses. One of, the one of the available reasons for the county to object to an annexation is a change in zoning to a more, he to more heavy, intensive, or dense use, and this is clearly a more intensive use of property. There are a couple of howevers, like there are in everything. The first however, and the one that's really important here, is however, you cannot object if the proposed zoning is consistent with your future land use map. That's the biggest thing we look for. And what you're looking at is your zoning is your future land use map, essentially with some other things overlaid on it. Those parcels are designated primarily as residential and agricultural future use on your future land use map. That one parcel, 00790009, that looks like a turtle shell, the smaller one south of the road, it's got a curved boundary on the north, up, 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 to the right, that one, that one, little one. That little parcel is designated on the future land use map for manufacturing and industrial use. However, the rest of the parcels are designated for the rural agricultural residential use. But most importantly, if you see that blue print up there that says Flint Hill, that entire parcel of property is located in what you have called the Flint Hill character area. And I wanna pull up some information that I'm gonna to read to you about the Flint Hill character area. The Flint Hill character area is limited to essentially agricultural and agricultural residential uses. Those are the only uses contemplated in the Flint Hill character area. And the reason for that, you can't quite see it, but just to the north of that parcel, and I don't think the photo, uh, I did a screen capture. But just to the north of that parcel is a, is a lake. It's one of your water drinking water reservoirs. So the purpose for that limited development within this entire area is obviously to protect your water source from heavy intensive uh, development. So this parcel of property probably does, and I say probably, and I'll explain that in a minute, probably does qualify for an opportunity, if this board so chooses, to object to the annexation. I say probably because, like so many other things that we deal with in city-county relationships, the laws is not quite as clear as we want it to be. Georgia law authorizes this body, by majority vote, to object to an annexation because a proposed change in zoning or land use a proposed increase in density and infrastructure demands related to the proposed change in zoning or land use. That appears to be there must be both, a, an, a, I'm going to use the word offensive, an offensive change of zoning and an infrastructure demand related to the proposed change in zoning or land use. So we have not 
identified a specific in infrastructure demand would be associated with this land use change. The, the road that you see, Flat Rock Road, that will go up the middle of the property and that portion of Gregory Road, once the property is bordered on both sides by the city, that becomes a city road. The city will become responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of that road. You will be relieved of that burden. Um, I don't know, simply because we weren't provided with the information of who provides water and sewer services to that area, the proposed rezoning contemplates essentially a large industrial warehouse manufacturing facility with, with large buildings scattered about throughout the project. So I expect there will be some, some significant infrastructure demands. I can't tell you as we sit here if those fall on you and fall, or fall on the city. I don't know that the development plans are that far along. So with that said, if this board desires to object to the proposed annexation and rezoning, you would adopt a resolution tonight. Now we'll read out what I would recommend that resolution to say. The procedure, what will happen next, is we will inform, if you, if you elect to object, we will inform the city of Covington of your objection. The objection is then basically transmitted to the Department of Community Affairs. The Department of Community Affairs will impanel a panel of five arbitrators and they will hear evidence about the proposed annexation and they'll make a ruling on whether or not this annexation should go forward or not go forward because your objection will be based primarily on a change in zoning and land use. That panel is empowered if they find it to be an appropriate if they find it to be an appropriate objection, that power, that panel would be empowered to impose zoning, zoning limits, zoning conditions, which would then become part of the deed records. It's, a, it's an expensive, it's a time consuming process, and it does require a substantial amount of work. It's essentially a mini lawsuit. So that's what's before you tonight. The question for you is whether or not you wish to object. If you don't want to object, you would simply make a motion not to object to the rezone or to the annexation. If you do want to make a motion to object, I am going to suggest to you what that motion should say. That motion would be a motion to object to the proposed annexation because it results in a material increase in burden on the county based upon the proposed change in zoning and land use, the proposed increase in density and the infrastructure demands related thereto, which significantly increase the net cost of the infrastructure to the county and which differs substantially from the existing land uses suggested for the property by the, by the county's comprehensive land use plan. You don't have to repeat that. If that's the motion you want to make, you could, you could say and make that motion. If it's seconded and approved, that would be the motion. We would then notify the city of that objection. There is always, just so you know, th this is not an all or nothing, we either you know, go all out war with the city or not. There is always the opportunity to have discussions, to work out whether there's conditions on the proposed land use or not. I, I don't know if you're in a position as we sit here today to evaluate a world of conditions. We did not have your zoning staff evaluate proposed conditions because we didn't have any. We did have your zoning staff evaluate the proposal as a whole and they were able to determine for us that the proposed land use does differ substantially from the county, county's land use plan, and it is, you're going from one end of the spectrum from, to another. You're going from the least intensive land use to the most intensive land use. So that's before the board. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, uh, Commissioner Stanley? Has it been mentioned what is the land going to be used for? It'll be an industrial manufacturing park facility. So we don't know exactly who the users are. There is a site plan that I believe, I'm not sure it's included in your package or not. Uh, I believe it is. And I'm uh, sorry, these pages aren't numbered. There is, there are two site, there is a proposed site plan. If I put it up there, would it show? Okay. If you can there, just tell, if you can just tell there us is that. a proposed site plan that shows uh, two phases. A phase one would consist of six buildings, an e-commerce facility, 
three warehousing facilities and two manufacturing facilities, which would total 2,415,000 square feet under roof. Phase two would consist of two warehouse facilities, one manufacturing facilities, facility which would be about 1,568,000 square feet under roof, which would be a total of just over 4 million square feet under roof, divided among nine separate buildings. This rezoning before the county, before the city initiate, before this project is initiated because of the size and the scope of it, will go to the Department of Community Affairs for a development of regional impact analysis. Y'all have seen those before, it's where they, they analyze the use, they make recommendations for infrastructure improvements, and they may also make a recommendation as to whether or not the proposal is in the best interest of the state or not. They don't necessarily always make an evaluation as to the it's already been done, right? Uh, the DR, I have not seen the DRI report back. It's pending. The last I checked, it was pending. I've not seen the actual DRI report. I think it's already been released. Okay. But it hasn't been released to us. We have, we've, we've not got it. I'll get it. I can, I'll get it. Okay. But when we requested it, when we got this in, we had not, it had not been. Okay. At that point, it had not been done. Commissioner Cowell. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Patrick, uh, is it just those three lots? Or you mentioned that uh, 79011 was also included in this. It is uh, parcel 0079009, which is the three that are highlighted or outlined in red. Right. It is the parcel. Uh, let me just confirm it's the parcel below as well. It is the parcel directly to the south, which is 0079011, which is where the hand is, and then also on the south side of Gregory Road. And then it is also parcel 0096006, -006, which is the parcel to the right on the south side of Gregory Road as well. Okay, and the majority of the residential is the smaller lots and on this side, is that correct? There's re those are residential parcels, and then further north, up Flat Rock Road. There's some, yeah. There's some up there as well. The remaining parcels appear to be large acreage. Okay, the majority of that land is rock. <laughs> so, I mean, I understand won't do something with your property, but a lot of that is rock. Um, I don't see a real, has the city of Covington's planning and zoning approved this yet? No, they, no. they've yet to approve it. Okay, has it gone to the city council yet? No, the city council can't vote on it until they have to give us notice and provide us an opportunity to object. Okay. 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 Any more discussion? Uh, one more question. Maybe two more. Uh, have I done a you, you know if I've done a traffic study or anything? I'm not aware of it. They would typically have to for a DRI. Okay. I have not seen it again. We were unable to get the, the DRI. Report. And the lot that you mentioned may have some impact on the reservoir? Well, I don't, we don't know if it does or doesn't, know. but that, it's in that character that's area which was correct. established for the purpose of protecting the reservoir. And that's something, if we, if we agree with it, they'll have to deal with that. Absolutely. Right? That's right. That's right. Every every property owner, when they develop, they are responsible for their water and the water that they're generating, and they'd be responsible for managing and handling their own stormwater, which is okay. where and and there's going to be impervious surface limitations as well for them. Okay. Motion. Need to get a motion, please. Go ahead, quick. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. It was just a uh, somewhat of a comment. 
Um, I had worked for the city government about 20, 24 years. And that was part of my route. <laughs> Going out reading those meters and it's a lot of rocks over there. And so I don't, I really don't see nothing that it may be good for other than some possible warehouses in certain areas of that, those particular property. And, um, you know, I just think personally that's a good use for it. Thank you. You seek a motion? Yep. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the annexation of, as requested. Second. It's been motioned um, by Commissioner Cowan that we approve this in a second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Yeah. By Commissioner Edwards. I just want to reiterate, Patrick, this, this, is, this is not consistent with our future land use map, correct? That's correct. It's not consistent with our character area map either, is that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> and on the banks of our drinking water, correct? In the, in the vicinity of. I I'm, I'm very familiar with that area. It's, on, sure. it's literally on the banks of our drinking water. So I, I can't support it. I'm sure. sorry, Robbie. Any more discussion? Substitute motion. Substitute motion. Can we file the objection? To, I'd like to, a motion to object to, to using the, the objection that Mr. Fitzpatrick used. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. It's been a motion. It's been a substitute motion on the floor uh, by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason um, that we object to this uh, annexation. Um, any discussion? Commissioner Cowell. Um, honestly, I really need some time to think about this. That's a big impact on that community out there. And it, I mean, I think, I think the uh, plan is a good plan, but I really need to think, at the, think that through. One more. What? I'm so I would I would ask you to table. What? Did they tell me so it's a substitute motion on the floor. Uh, would you and second? Would you like to change that to a table or? If if I could interject, the hour we have to under the current Georgia law we have 45 days to object. I'm. I'm thinking out loud. Um, the date of the notice was July 11th, which means we probably got it the 15th or the 16th. I don't know exactly what day we got it. We'll have to check the certified mail receipt. So we would have time to table this to August 17th, and you would still have, you would you'd still be within your time period to assert an objection. Um, we can certainly get additional information and distribute to the board members. I, I do think we're okay on time. Okay, I, I mean, it's up to stay in these guys. All right, the, this is a matter of process, right? So if I withdraw my motion, it reverts back to? To his motion, that's right. He'll, he'll enter a substitute motion to table. He can make a motion to table. I'll withdraw my last motion. I would like to make a substitute motion to table this to have some little bit more time to do some more research on it and evaluate the impacts on the uh, residential area. Can I get a second? Second. It's been motion that we table this um, by Commissioner Cowell and second by Commissioner Edwards. Um, any discussion? I do want to suggest to the board um, as the county attorneys um, made everybody aware of a while ago. We don't need, we don't know who area of service that there is this. Uh, we don't know where if we got county water lines over there in this. We don't we don't know any, we don't have any of that information. So I suggest that we get in touch with um, have our county manager get in touch with James Brown and see the landscape of what the county has already invested out there as an in infrastructure also. 
make everyone aware of that if you can. Yes, Thank you. Um, any more discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Stand table. Thank you. Next is item number 11, development of services, request and approval of contract for Ross Associates. It's Shana <coughs> Apple Wait is here tonight. You want to come on up? Thank you, Chairman. Um, good evening, Commissioners. Development Services is requesting approval of a contract for Ross Associates to complete an update to our impact, to do an impact fee update. Um, it's a cost not to exceed $62,350. Um, so you know the impact fees are some of what pays for you know, our infrastructure, our roads, you know, public facilities and so on. And this update will let us know if we are you know, indeed, co indeed collecting you know, what we should be collecting to cover the cost of these projects. This is why we would need to have this updated. Thank you. Can I see a motion, please? So Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Passes 5 0. <laughs> Next is uh, recreation request and approval for matrix engineering task order. Um, Jeff Prime is here tonight. Good evening. So this is a, we have a task order contract with Metrics Engineering to provide uh, material testing and geotechnical uh, services for our projects. And this task order, in their contract, they have a threshold of $100,000 uh, authorized back to the chairman and to the county manager to sign off on task orders. Uh, this particular task order pushes them above that threshold. So. I might need some help, Patrick, with coming up with, with the motion, but our intent is to not only approve this task order tonight, but also to give us another leg of, uh, of approvals back to the chairman and the county manager for these ta future task orders that we'll have. So, um, the first thing I would say is, is that second part of your request is not on the agenda. I would suggest we might want to hold off on that, so we don't have to do it on the agenda. But okay, um, I, I, Randy put it put it for us. I thought she didn't put it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, all I'm seeing is the rec the approval of this task order twelve. Um, well, I, I would I suggest we do we let's hold off and do it if. Does that, will that slow you down on any, anything immediately? Uh, no, it won't slow us down as long as this one gets approved. Yeah, get, just approve just this one. Just trying to keep from having to come back. Right, let's, let's right. approve this one, and then let's bring uh, sort of the reset back at the next meeting. That'd be good. Okay. Yeah. I'm in agreement with that as well. This particular, this particular one is to, to provide material testing for the Danny Dobbs skate park, which is under construction. So we're doing one, and this is the one that's on the agenda tonight, guys. That's right. No confusion. Um, I seek a motion, please. So moved. It's been motioned by Commissioner Mason and second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? Um, Jeff Bryan, can you come back for a second? Sure. Mr. Bryan. Uh, Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you. I'm just trying to, we're testing, the, are we testing the material? So, so. <clears throat> part, part of the quality control that we do for all of our projects and they're required by, by state law is that we do material testing for the concrete, compaction, all that kind of stuff. That's what this is doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All in favor? It passes 5 votes. Thank you so much. Public work requests an approval of contract with GDOT to oversee construction. Funding for CR 511 Brown Ridge Road. Um, Chester is here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. I have several items tonight. If um, 
um, I apologize for putting so many on the agenda, but um, the first one is the Yellow River Bridge replacement. The board has already approved the, the um, notice of award to the contractor, uh, CMES, for $4.9 million. And um, GDOT's approved the, um, the uh, award. There are also, um, <coughs> GDOT's been appointed by the, um, by the federal government to oversee the funding of this project. And so um, the county is required, in order to get the 80% the of the funds from the Federal um, Highway Administration, we have to uh, sign a contract with GDOT. And the contract um, has an administrative fee of $20,000 that goes to GDOT. And um, we are committing to uh, spending the uh, $4.9 million for this project. So I'm requesting tonight that the, the board approve um, sign a contract with GDOT to administer this project and abide by all the rules and regulations in that uh, contract that's required by Federal Highway. And is this budgeted? Is that correct? It is in, uh, we would be responsible for 80% and it is in the, uh, the SPLOST, uh, the 2017 SPLOST. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I seek a motion, please. Come on. Can I get a second? Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Henderson and seconded by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? Commissioner Cow. Thank you, Chester. Let me make sure I'm clear on something. Is item 13 and 14 of those two separate things? You, um, you were saying 4.9 million, that's on item 14. Yes, sir. I have, there were the two bridges with two contracts for each bridge. One's $4.9 million, and then one's uh, the, the uh, $8 million. So yes, they are two separate things. Let's, yes, they sir. are two separate. Yeah, okay. let's deal with item 13. <coughs> All right. Any more discussion? All in favor? It passes 5-0. Now let's deal with item number 14. The, the next item <coughs> is, um, it deals with a contract with the uh, construction contractor, CMES. And um, again, the, the county has uh, approved the notice of award at this time, it's, it's, um, it's time to um, sign the contract, the chairman to sign the contract with the construction contractor to begin construction. And it's for $4.9 um, million. Um, we're responsible for 80%, same thing we went over with the, the last item. Um, the total cost to the county will be $979,179.01. And, 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 uh, and it's going to be paid out of the 2017 SPLOS fund. Thank you, sir. I seek a motion, please. Make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? <coughs> it's been motioned by Commissioner Cowell and second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? All in favor? It passed by zero. <coughs> Item number 15, sir. The next item is a separate uh, project. It's the uh, intersection improvements um, at uh, Harold Dobbs Road and Crow Road. We're straightening out that uh, intersection, uh, pre preparing for a, a traffic signal uh, sometime in the future. And um, in order to do that, there are um, five parcels that we have to acquire uh, for right of way. And um, I have those listed. Um, in the packet that you got, um, the total for the parcels is $135,370 to purchase those parcels. And our consultant, Atlas um, Technical Consultants, they have, um, they have the uh, options and agreements um, from the property owners. So I'm requesting uh, that um, the board approve the purchase of right away and easements for the parcels for the attached options and counter offers. Thank you. I seek a motion, please. I'll make that motion to approve the purchase of right of way for and easements for Coral Road and Harold Dobbs Road. Can I get a second, please? Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner um, Cowell and second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? Commissioner Sanders. Chester, I'm aware that there's <coughs> that's about to be built in this area, in this exact location. 
So I'm not sure what, I wish Shana was still here because that'll go to the Planning Commission meeting to see if it passed or not. So is the developer going to pay a portion of this? Is there going to be building homes <coughs> in the section? Yeah, the, the developer the has um, designed their development and submitted uh, site plans uh, and have, uh, has accommodated the proposed improvements that the county will be purchased, will be paying for. So the developer's not paying for those improvements. Those improvements are are uh, not being done for this development, therefore the, the, uh, that area of the county at large. I know, but the, where this is specified, this is where these homes are being built. So I'm curious, I wish Shane was still here, were there any uh, stipulations in that last planning commission meeting where they had to have easements or uh, right of way and so forth? And I'm pretty sure there probably was some requirements by that planning commission. But I, I, my question is, is the developer going to be taking some of this cost? The uh, county would be purchasing the right of way, and the county would be paying for the construction. Any more discussion? All in favor? Any, any opposed? It passes 3 2. Thank you. The, yes. the next item is um, the project at Yellow River at uh, Brown Bridge Road. And it's the same thing we, we talked about before. This one is for. Um, um, let's see. I believe this one is for the contract with um, Wright Brothers Construction. Yes, sir. And so the total is eight million one hundred and nine thousand one hundred and nineteen dollars and eighty two cents. And I'm requesting that um, the board approve um, sign a contract with uh, Wright Brothers to construct the bridge. Thank you, sir. Got to seek a motion, please. I'll make a motion to approve the Wright Brothers contract with the Wright Brothers to construct uh, bridge improvements at Brown Bridge Road over Yellow River. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. It's been motioned by Commissioner Cowan and second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? All in favor? I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chester, I should have asked on the project before. This this awarded uh, project goes to a, a court. It goes by the county's purchasing guidelines, right, to find this contract. Correct. Yes, sir. and federal highway guidelines. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? It passes five votes. <coughs> Thank you. And the the final item is um, the. The uh, contract with GDOT for the same project, the $8.1 million project. Um, GDOT is managing this project as well um, as far as the funding, and they're overseeing it, and they charge a fee of $20,000 that the county would have to, per to pay. Um, and so I'm requesting that the, the board approve the agreement with GDOT to include the administrative fee in, in order to proceed with construction of the Yellow River Bridge replacement project. Just again, this is budget, is that correct? It is, it is to come out of the 2017 spots, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Got to seek a motion. I might get a motion. Can I get a second, please? Second. Thank you. It's been, <laughs> it's been motion by Commissioner Cow and second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? All in favor? It passes by a vote. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next is item number 18. Um, discussion and consideration to approve an, an engagement letter for loss. Uh, I think this is uh, Mr. Sims. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, after having discussions with our county attorney, um, he thought it would be best for us to have a consultant to assist our county with the loss negotiation. And Aaron is here to kind of go into details on how he think it's best. Thank you again, commissioners. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, lost is after SPLOS, it's the next intergovernmental agreement that we're going to have to reach between the county and the cities. And just for a quick primer uh, on lost, it is a 1% sales tax. The purpose of lost is to uh, ease property taxes, it's, it's a substitute for property taxes. Lost should 
Uh, it's not intended to be uh, capital funds or to fund new projects. It's merely to provide property tax relief by substituting some property tax dollars with sales tax dollars. The law requires counties and cities to come together every 10 years and agree on new loss distribution formula. And the statute provides several factors that the parties should consider. Uh, so one of those factors is population, uh, but there's a lot of factors that go into this. The lost certificate has to be reached by the county and the cities by no later than December 31st of this year. And if the parties fail to reach an agreement on how the fund should be allocated, then the county will lose lost until it's put to a referendum and the voters come up and have to vote for it again. So it's critical that we're able to uh, go into this negotiation process with a good understanding of what those factors say about how the fund should be allocated between the city and the county. Uh, the consultant we identified, Eves Consulting Group, provides the service for a lot of counties in the state, uh, several metropolitan counties and cities. Uh, I'm familiar with his work. Uh, he's provided some services for several of our other clients with respect to Lost. Uh, I believe he puts together a good product. And at the end, what you're going to have is it's going to be a report explaining here's how uh, the county and the cities have been using SPLOS to date. This is what's changed since the last time you, you negotiated SPLOS. And based on these factors, this is a range for what the county should expect to get out of LOST. Um, and without a report like that, you're, you're going to be asked to sit down with all of the leaders from the cities and negotiate uh, allocation of the, the lost revenues, and you won't really have an idea of what, what you should be asking for. Uh, so this $50,000 proposal, put a report in your hands that will tell you exactly where you should be, and it will be a good tool in your tool belt when we get into those negotiations with the cities. Thank you, sir. We got to seek a motion, please. So, it's been motioned by uh, Commissioner Edwards and second by um, Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? <coughs> Commissioner Henderson. Uh, uh, is there an additional penny that is collected along with the splash? Uh, I'm asking for my information first. Yes, it is. It's currently being collected now. Uh, so right now, I believe Newton County collects a 7% sales tax. So, so one of those pennies is going to uh, to your SPLOST. One of those pennies is currently going to LOST. And uh, you don't typically see a, uh, you know, when we do SPLOST, there's a project list. SPLOST is exciting because we know we're going to <coughs> see something. Uh, LOST is more passive. It replaces property taxes. So if you don't get those pennies, then the county's going to have to raise property taxes. A absolutely. So, so and, and I guess this is, this is to our uh, interim county manager. How much of the lost taxes in this um, in in this past budget did it go to alleviate some of the taxes for our citizens? And, and I'm just if, if you tell me, I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to find out or get a number as far as our budget. How much of that money went to our budget about our taxpayers? That's a great question, uh, Commissioner. Our finance director left early due to illness, but I'll be happy to get you the exact number tomorrow morning. I don't know have the exact number, yeah. but I, I will email it to you tomorrow morning. Uh, and, 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 and thank you for that. So could we could you also get that to me and make that public, please? Because I think it's, um, I know for me it would be very informational, and I'm sure for the citizen in the county it would be information quite to as well. It, uh, it also is included in our budget that was approved, so it's actually online, but to get you the exact number, I'd be happy to give that to you. And I, I can give you a ballpark. It's the 1% the loss applies to, I, I believe, the same transactions that a SPLOS would. Uh, so when, when we just, uh, when, when we're considering the SPLOS at a penny, uh, we were expecting about $18 million per year. Uh, under the current loss distribution certificate, the county receives 75%. So the amount the county gets currently per year under lost is 75% of 18 million, which is, I think, around 14, 15 million. Good. Thank you. You're my kind of lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the exact number for you. 
and Aaron, and that's why it's important for us to have a consultant to make sure that we get those funds. Is that correct? Absolutely. And, well, and that's why if, if I may just one, one, Mr. Chair, if I may, those are the types of things during budget time you need to kind of get out there. And so they can see, so the taxpayer can see, like myself, like all of us, sitting up for your own property, at least on my house, we will see where we're getting some help or where we're not getting any help from. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Evers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So will, will each consulting services provide us with a recommendation or just overall informational framework? Is it? He does provide a recommendation. So the recommendation will come in the form of a range it will be you know, X percent to X percent. And uh, it's a great report. It explains exactly which factors he looks at, uh, why there could be some variation in the range. Um, one of the, you know, th this is, it, it could be contentious between counties and cities. I know it has been in some places. Uh, and so what this report does is it is identifies those points of contention explains what the city's perspective on that would be and explains what the county's perspective on that would be. It really gives you the tools to negotiate with the city intelligently. Otherwise, uh, you're just arguing about numbers without any context. But he would not give an allocation recommendation, right? There, there would be, but it's, it's in the form of a range. And you, you can go above or below that range, but he does give you a range and he does uh, a good job of explaining why that range is what it is. And um, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but the law certificate is in place for 10 years. Um, so that's another reason why you want to be well informed before you go into it, uh, because the decision you make is going to follow the county for a while. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So uh, to, to answer Commissioner Henderson's question about how much of your revenue comes from loss, I can't give you the dollar figure amount. But I was able to look at the 2021, the year ending July 30, July 1, 2021 financial report, and it's 16% of your general fund is generated by loss. So that's that's just that was in the the public information that was provided. So he'll they'll have to get you we the, have exact, the exact number. Exactly. I, I would like to emphasize what Aaron indicated. The, the purpose of bringing this uh, consultant before you all is the lasting impact of 10 years for our county. So we want to make sure we get it right now because it lasts for 10 years. Yeah, and as part of the scope of work, um, if the board would like, Mr. Reeves will come in uh, to your meeting one night, go through the report. I'm sure he would have slides and he could answer all of your questions in detail as well. That's built into the price. Um, there is a uh, fixed rate, I believe it's $95 an hour. If you were to ask him to come to any mediation session uh, as you start meeting with the cities. Uh, but um, the, the basic consulting services you're getting will, will result in a report and a presentation. Commissioner? If I may just add just a little bit, is that, you know, I understand about it. The number will be about 16 million, 15 million, 14 million. But how is that being applied to the taxes, the taxpayer, the property taxes? And how could that uh, relieve them of some of those taxes? And I understand by sitting up here for a while uh, that even with a rollback, people still get tax, high tax bill too as well. So how can it, or how would that, or how have that? relieve some of them from those taxes. That's all. Thank you. Right, and, and uh, I don't have the number, but the, the benefits of a sales tax are anyone who comes in from out of county or out of state pays that sales tax here. And so every dollar you collect through a sales tax from a non-resident is one less dollar you have to collect in taxes from your residents. Um, it's great because it's you know, when people come from outside of the county and they enjoy the benefits and services and amenities that the county has to offer, uh, this is one way that they can help contribute to that. Thank you. And Aaron, I'm correct when I say that all lost revenue goes to general fund. With one, the county's portion goes to the county's general fund. So that, if that amount is $10 million, then the 
property tax burden is relieved of $10 million. Is that, is that accurate? That is true, and it, it, so, has, it has to be that way. By so law. we could figure out what the millage rate would be without loss, and we can figure out what the, what the millage rate would be with differing levels of loss. Assuming the money. Right. Thank you. So guys, all in favor? Pass by vote. Thank you so much. <coughs> next, next is item number 18. A. Uh, this is something that I, I asked for. Um, I'm going to start off by saying no one in particular asked for me to ask for this, but I, I do think it's appropriate that we uh, pay for this. Actual funding uh, for Nelson Heights Community Center, Watcher Street Community Center, and McIntosh Trail pay for their review, their audit. Uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, access board to pay for that uh, because we don't we only allocate so many funds to them anyway, uh, and I think we don't allocate enough from, for McIntosh, McIntosh to actually pay for for their their audit. So if if this board can find it in their heart to actually pay, pay for their audit, I would greatly appreciate it. You want to make a point? What? Comment is, is simple. You know, I support doing any kind of audit that you might need to do on anybody. I, once again, like I've said, you know, this time and several times before, if we're going to do it, just make everybody. <laughs> Don't exclude just most everybody and, and just look at uh, three organizations of, of, uh, of people of color in unserved areas. Um, in the audit that we looked at, you know, I thought we'd go to the Mason where we do our taxes and they run you run you out what you spent with and she said no JC said we called in just as you said and she explained to Anthony and I said it's gonna call from two thousand to ten thousand dollars to get an order for three years. I said come on I said we we don't want to get that much. We only receive I think Watch Street is in the same category is three thousand three hundred and thirty dollars a month in which most of the time it doesn't take care of the money. You know, if the utility bill run you about fifteen hundred dollars a month, then you hire somebody for, uh, for about uh, six hundred uh, or six hundred dollars a month. Then you pay for the security system, which is another five hundred dollars a month. You really don't have enough to pay all those bills. So you, you know, uh, so what I'm saying is nobody's trying to take anything from the county. We're just trying to provide a service for some underserved kids. And if you go on my page, you see about sixty of them black and white, and all other nationalities, on our page, we're just trying to have fun just to be kids under adult supervision. And let's not make it hard for them. Let's make it easy. And Watch Street the same way. And so um, I agree with the chairman say, um, let's, not, let's not make it hard, because that wasn't, that wasn't kind of understood to me. I thought I wouldn't support it. It was going to cost that much for an audit for the limited amount of money that you give, and then, you know, in the personal tax that I know that I've got personal, and guess what, I don't have nothing to do with it, changed over to my son, the counselor. And, but it's fine, I can take that, because I've been for a while, and I, my skin a little tough, and I could continue to take it. But um, don't take it out on the kids. Don't take it out on the community. You know, take it out if you got a complaint, or, or whatever it is you want to bring, take it to me, but just, and I'm going to just say this, so people will say I'm out here. If you got something you want to know about me, J.C. Henderson, call me, and I'll tell you, 770 896 Hey, I'm not afraid to talk to you, anybody. I'll stand toe-to-toe, face-to-face, and we'll talk about District 4. So let's work together, y'all, and set these kids out, uh, all in District 4, all in District 4. Help these kids out and just be kids. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, again, guys, um, places like Viewpoint Health, um, Department of Health, places that receive funds, they, they have an audit every year uh, that they already paying for. Um, Nelson Heights, I mean, um, Washington Street, I don't think they, um, we want to make sure that we get them covered because, them, again, the, the amount of funding we give them don't really um, cover and audit. So, if you can find any yards to do that, I would greatly appreciate it. I seek a motion for it. So moved. Thank you. It's been motion by Commissioner 
Mason is second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? Uh, Commissioner Henderson. Could you, uh, um, since I was carrying my mind with somewhere else at this time, and they told me in the meeting, could you kind of explain that motion to me, please? It's not good. So your, this board has approved a policy that requires the nonprofits that receive appropriations to provide to the county a budget or a, a, an audit. And what the proposal is, is that the county pay for that audit so that those three organizations don't have to use their money to complete the audit. So the county's gonna fund the audit for them so it won't cost them any money. Could, uh, well, uh, so they're gonna pay, like for instance, the people who does our taxes and papers and stuff, and we go through it like Mason. They're gonna pay Mason to do this audit. As long as they certify CPA, as long as they certify CPA, Oh, I'm pretty sure they, if they're not, then I'm pretty sure they, they will get who they need. Commissioner Cowell? Uh, this is Patrick. This is legal? No problem? Yes, I, I think it's absolutely appropriate for the county to, That's all to fund something that it's, when it's imposing that requirement. Yeah. Uh, commi Commissioner Sandler. I just have one question. Is every nonprofit that is receiving appropriation from Newton County turning in an audit. Yes. Because I know we didn't say audit, we said provide their detailed information as far as what we didn't specifically say audit, but if that's what the board is going to go with, that's fine. So I just want to make sure that every nonprofit that receiving appropriation, no matter who they are, are turning in a detailed audit just like we're requiring these four individuals. Three, four. Three, four, one, two, three, four, five, Yep. I want to make sure that's on record. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be. I, whether they, I mean, I don't, I, I don't enforce it. Your management team does that, but they are okay. all so, supposed to so be. So, Mr. Mr. Sam, are you going to submit that every nonprofit that receive appropriation that's on our budget as well, anybody who receiving funds, no matter if it's intergovernmental, they're turning in a complete detailed audit that's going to be transparent to the residents of Newton County? Okay, I think the last time we had a lot of discussion about uh, some organizations that are like quasi type of government. So I don't know if you are, you are implying about those entities, but if they are a nonprofit, yes, they do uh, are required to perform an audit. Now as far as like the economic development, I don't know if you're referring to that. They're, they're like a, a government entity. Every nonprofit, even if it's economic development, if they're receiving appropriation from this county, we give them funds. Every nonprofit. Every nonprofit. Every nonprofit. Yeah. We want to see everything. If we're going to do it for three or four, every nonprofit that receives funding from Newton County. Every All last of the one. nonprofits. IDA, JDA, PPA, whoever they are. Every, every last one. Thank you, sir. Any more discussion? All in favor? The past five votes. Next, alcohol license. Um, final reading. I think this is Mr. Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess we're just making a, I'll make a motion to approve final reading of Marathon Food Mart Covington Store Prime LLC 1814 Highway 11 South Covington Georgia 30014. Applicant is Hiru Chasa and he has apparently no criminal history. Thank you. And your motion is to approve the license. Yes. Yes. So stated. So, <laughs> so stated. So motion is stated by the county attorney. Sir. Can I get some? Thank you sir. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and seconded by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Pass by vote. Next is citizens' comments. This opportunity will allow citizens to make comments. Um, you have three minutes to do so. Please state your name and address for the record, please.
My name is Brian Fricks, uh, 130 Cornish Trace Drive, Covington, Georgia. Uh, I wanted to make some comments on the motion that was tabled about approval of property on Gregory Road and Flat Rock. If we could see the um, plat, I could kind of give some information. But I'm a law lifelong member of this community. Uh, went to Palmer Stone, Cousins, Newton High School. I work at the hospital, been there for 22 years. But what my concern is with this property is that it does lie in the watershed of Newton County. So this is going to impact a lot of our residents as well as Newton County. So it doesn't matter color, um, income, no, no um, variables. But what it is on that plot, there's a lake in the center of the property and it drains into the reservoir. So it has a direct connect. I have a topographical map showing the property and there's a hundred foot elevation in that short distance um, that drains directly to the reservoir. So the reservoir was founded with the goal of promoting water quality, adequate for safe, healthy public use, as well as conservation of wildlife, fish, and other beneficial aquatic life. So what I'm asking the commission to do is to look out for the health and well-being of the uh, constituents and not approve this from agriculture to heavy industrial because the um, infrastructure is not there. There's a lot going on. The city, um, as far as oversight, you would be turning it over to the city who, according to the EPA, they've had multiple violations of Clean Water Act and numerous businesses under the city's supervision. Um, West Rock, Fiber Visions, Pactip, SRG Global, HB Fuller, Old Castle, General Mills, Nishimbo, SKC, uh, Michelin Tread, Kamatsu, to name a few. And these are all people who have violated the Clean Water Act. So we'd be putting our um, drinking water at risk, turning these things over. Um, so that's just my request that the um, city look out for the people and choose people over profit. So, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else? Commission Edwards. Thank you, Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to make a couple brief announcements. Uh, we are going to be having our last and final movie in the park at Diddy Dobbs uh, on Friday, August the 26th at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, we're excited about it. We're actually going to have an electric vehicle on site during the movie so that people get an opportunity to kind of see what electric vehicles are actually like. Um, I'm also going to be having a, a career and job fair for veterans uh, as well as anyone else in the community. Uh, on Saturday, August the 27th from 10 a.m. until 4 o'clock p.m. at St. Paul AME Church, uh, which is 13108 Brown Bridge Road. We are also going to have on that day a mobile veterans unit uh, that is actually going to be there that's really going to be able to help assist our veterans. So we're excited to have that mobile unit there as well. Um, I was also excited to, uh, in Colorado, uh, week, uh, before, reappointed as the 2022-2023 Vice Chair of the Community Economic and Workforce Development Steering Committee. So I'm excited to continue to gain knowledge uh, about how we can really elevate and mobilize our community. Also become a member of uh, the Economic Mobility Leadership Network, uh, which there are only a select few uh, elected officials throughout the United States uh, that are a part of this group. We're going to be traveling around uh, throughout the year to different sites throughout the United States to really see how they mobilize their community uh, from an economic and workforce development uh, and community perspective. So I'm looking forward uh, to that as well. And then also, uh, I was honored to be appointed as the 2022-2023 Vice Chair of the Revenue and Finance Committee uh, through the Association of County Commissions of Georgia. So I'm excited to represent Newton County uh, on a state level as well as on a national level 
and go to these conferences to gain information so that I can come back uh, and be able to help assist our communities and mobilize them and take it to the next level. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Sanders. Mr. Mason, I think we're going to duplicate efforts because I'm going to have that mobile unit at St. Paul August 20. <laughs> so uh, my sorority sister is the federal uh, VA over in Biden administration, and she actually connected me with that on last year. So we're going to be having that veteran mobile unit twice at, in New County. So that's a good thing. Um, greatly that we uh, actually attend these conferences because, as stated, it's called peer learning and sharing. I know it was a comment mentioned earlier about thinking for ourselves, but we go to these conferences to learn from other, other counties and other uh, entities to find out what they're doing to bring it back to New County. So if we're not learning from others, and we don't need to be going to conventions. And it's really important, and when going to these conventions, speaking to those finance directors, those chairmen, those Department of Treasury, and all those individuals to be able to bring those resources back to the community, that's how you learn and progress versus being stagnant, sitting in the same place all the time and not hearing information and not retaining it. So it's so important that you learn, because if you don't, then you're constantly being in the same position. So being at the conference, I've learned services that other counties provide, and it made me think about what we're doing here in the county for our citizens. When they're providing foster care homes for their foster children as well as their parents, when they have a whole entire human service building that has partnerships with their various entities and having those services inside of their, inside of their buildings, when they're providing housing for residents who cannot afford to live like we're doing in this recession, affordable housing, the counties are doing all of this. So I sit back and think like, what are we doing here in Newton County? And that's why we go to these conventions to learn from other entities to find out how they're doing it revamp it and make it better. Because if you sit here constantly thinking about the things that you're doing and you're not listening to others, that's mediocrity. Thank you. Richard Anderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I, I thank uh, Commissioner Mason, Commissioner Sanders, and one of said, right, and it's about doing something for our community. Uh, I personally, you know, I just want, I like hands-on. I like to sit out in the community, go out to people do and find out what their needs are. And I learned that, that there was a lot of food insecurity in our community. And I said it earlier, at First Baptist Church right over here off of Jackson Highway, uh, there are lines of cars. In fact, I started to, but I changed my mind because I didn't want to maybe impose or embarrass on somebody how many cars was up there. And I thought about a few years ago, I was up there. Uh, myself personally. And I thought about it in the community how, how many calls that I received said, JC, can you, can you help my family? We need some uh, food boxes. Or we need some food, you know, uh, help us out a little bit. Or uh, JC, you know, we need to pay all the utility bills we're behind. And I think we kind of addressed that, finally addressed that problem. But the problem that I, I see in our community, first of all, is food insecurity. That's why that I want to give uh, uh, money to local churches like St. Paul, like Bethlehem Baptist Church, or like the West Street Church, or like to Pleasant View Baptist Church, and, and others, until the, the money that I had allotted for it would run out and try to help those families because we know that they had a, already have a food bank in existence, and all you have to do is buy the food um, so that they can feed the people who were asking for the food. Like for our seniors, you know, some of them, even though I, um, uh, our state representative, uh, Sherry Henderson, had given out fans at our senior services, we still know that there's some saint, need some fans out in the community. So that's why we wanted them to go ahead and release our money so that we give, we had $5,000, we would to give to our seniors for fans. So that some of them can sort of, so the air can circulate in their homes and stuff they need right now, we want, want to do. We also understand that there's people um, in our community, single families who, who are children, um, they don't have nobody to keep them. They don't know where to take them. That's why we want, and we're still making Nelson Height Community Center available for them. We even got people from Lockdale. If you look on my page, you see a lot of kids that in there where we take from our prior summer camp who come, who have came down here because they didn't have nowhere to go in order to have that summer camp for the kids that really need to. I mean, we could always go anywhere and help people everywhere. 
But I believe, I'm a firm believer, I'm told Mr. Chairman, that charity starts at home. And let's start doing something right now to help our people right here at home. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Calvin. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Commissioner Henderson, uh, Vice Chair, for filling in for me at the last board meeting. Thank you so much, sir. I uh, greatly appreciate um, the job that you did. Um, also, we're doing a, this Saturday, teaming up with the Lindsay Firm, we're doing a back to school giveaway. Uh, not only are we doing a back to school giveaway, but we are um, helping young kids who have found themselves in, in some trouble, trying to help them get their record uh, clean. So if you know it of anyone 18 and younger that have found themselves in that situation, please, ma'am, please, sir, let us know so we can try to get them some assistance. I'm sorry? Yeah, okay. I think that what I want to say, it's not an easy job. I mean, man, I tell you, one thing after another after another, but make a long story short, uh, with, with time, <laughs> with time, and I thank you, and I like to thank the Board of Commission and the Interim County Manager for putting up with me for that time, and we, we got through it, and I think we got, we got the work done as usual. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Sanders. Yes, sir, I just wanted to add about our department directors here. I, I definitely hear um, where the commissioners go out and get training and ideas from uh, outside entities, but I will say that uh, the directors here in Newton County, I'm very impressed with. They bring ideas to me, to our organization, and if you just look around and see what's happening, there are a lot of changes that are occurring in our community, and they, they're focused. Uh, they, they want you all to know that we're professionals, we're getting it right, we're learning, but we, we have talent here. And I just want you all to know that. Thanks, sir. Guys, I seek a motion, please. Oh, second. It's been motioned by, um, let me see, uh, 